In this section of the course, we're going to shift our attention to creating queries. But before we do that, there's just one final thing that I need to do to my ticket maintenance form, and that is add a title. Because currently, we are pretty much titleless at the top here. So let's jump into Design View. I'm going to click in the form header, and you can see I've got a little orange box up here, and I can simply type in some text. So let's call this Ticket Maintenance. And I'm going to drag that out. And then if we open up the property sheet, we can start to apply some formatting. So I want this to be a lot bigger than it currently is. Let's make this, let's go for 26. In fact, I think I'm going to go for 28. That's a little bit better. I'm going to align this into the center. And remember, this is going to be in the center of the boundary box. So because this boundary box doesn't run the entire length of this form, it's not really in the center. So what we can do here is we can delete out this other boundary box and make this a little bit longer so that this appears to be exactly in the middle of the form. And there we go. That looks much better. I'm also going to change the, let's go for the font weight. Let's make this bold. And I'm also going to change the font color. Let's keep with our blue theme. Perfect. Let's take one final look at that. And I think that looks a lot better. So now that we have that with a nice title, let's shift our attention to talking about queries. Now, what exactly are queries? Well, queries are searches that we can perform on one or more tables. And why do we create queries? Well, over time, our database is going to grow. And as our database gets bigger and bigger, it gets a lot harder to search for things. You might find that you experience lag. And as our database grows, it gets a lot harder to search for things. So what we can do is we can create queries which help pull out the information that we need in the most efficient way possible for our database. So you should find that your searches are a lot quicker and more efficient if you're using a query. Now, there are a few different ways that we can build our queries. If we jump up to the Create tab, you can see we have a Queries group just here. We can choose to use the Query Wizard or we can go straight into Query Design. So we're going to start out with Query Design. Now, this is going to open up effectively what we call the Query Window. Currently, this Query Window at the top here is empty because we don't have any tables added as yet. And then underneath, we have this little grid area. This is officially known as the QBE, Query by Example. But most people simply call it the grid. So what we can do here is we can drag one or more tables. And you can see over on the right hand side, we have a list of all of our tables. We can drag those into the query window and then we can use different fields from those tables to build our queries, build our search criteria. So let's first add a table to the query window. And I'm going to start with the biggest table, which is tuple ticket. So let's select it and click add selected tables. Now we can drag this down so we can see all of the fields and we can use any of these to build our query. So let's start out with a really basic query. I want a query that returns a list of all of the ticket numbers in the database. So what I can do is I can grab the ticket number field and I can simply drag and drop it down to the grid and drop it into this field area. So now if I run this query and if you take a look at the query design ribbon in the results group, we have a run button. If I run this query, it's simply going to produce a list of all of the ticket numbers in the database. Really nice and simple. And we can run a simple query like this on pretty much anything. Now, currently we're looking at this query in data sheet view. But notice that when we're working with queries, we have an SQL view. Let's jump across and take a look at it. Now, SQL is the underlying code which controls this query. And even if you are not somebody who's used to coding or programming, anything like that, these pieces of SQL code are actually really simple to understand. You can see here it's saying select tuple ticket dot ticket number. So basically find the ticket number from the table tuple ticket. That's all it's doing. 
Now I'm going to save this query. Let's close it down. I'm going to say yes, I want to save it. And I'm just going to call this one query test. Now, because this is a query, we're going to stick to our naming convention and call it QRY. And I'm just going to put test on the end there. Let's click on OK. Notice over in the navigation pane, we now have a new group called queries and there is my saved query. Now let's reopen this query by double clicking and we're going to jump back into design view to take us back to our query window. Now what about if this time I want to see not only the ticket number but also the customer name? Well I can simply grab the customer field and again drop it down into this fields area. Let's run the query at the top and check it out. That's exactly what I get. Now, if we take a look at the SQL code for this, again, very simple. This time we're selecting ticket number and customer from Tubal Ticket. Really straightforward to understand. Let's go back into design view. Now, what if I wanted to run a query that includes all of these fields? Well, notice at the top here, we have a little asterisk. So all I would need to do is drag and drop this asterisk down to the grid. And then when we run, we're going to get every single result pulled back for every single field. Let's jump back into design view. Now, when you're working with this grid towards the bottom, it's good to understand what each of these rows mean. So the first row where it says field, this defines the fields that you want to include in your query. The second row defines the table that these fields have been taken from. And the third row defines the sort order. Now I'm going to remove the asterisk by simply selecting the column and pressing delete. And this time we're going to run this query, which will produce the ticket number and the customer name. But we're going to sort this list alphabetically by the customer name. So if I click in the sort area just here underneath customer, I can choose ascending or descending. So let's click on ascending. Let's run the query. And there you go. It's now sorted by customer name. So A to Z. If we check out the SQL code for this, you can see we have a new line of code. So it says order by and it's telling us that we're ordering it by the customer field. Now, notice that it hasn't specified anywhere in here if this is ascending or descending, and that's because the default is to do ascending. But if, for example, I wanted to change this around and sort it descending, I could simply add DESC onto the end here. Let's run the query again and notice it's now sorting in descending order. If we take a look in design view, you can see that it's actually changed it to descending in here based on the code that I changed. Now, the next row that we have here is the show row. So this is where we can choose if we want to actually show this information in the results of our query. So if I was to deselect customer and run this query, it's just going to show me the ticket number field. But the criteria is effectively still there. And then underneath that, we have a criteria row. So let me show you how this works. Now I'm going to grab another field from Tibble Tickets. Let's grab the priority field and drop it into here. Now, maybe I'm only interested in seeing tickets that have a priority of one, because currently, if I was just to run this query, it's going to show me all tickets for all priorities. So I want to refine this down a little bit. Let's switch back into design view. So I'm going to type in one just here. Let's run the query and check it out. We now have a much more refined list. And if we go into SQL view, you can see that now we have another line of code in here, and this is a where. So from the top, we're basically saying select the ticket number, the customer name and the priority from Tubble Ticket, where the ticket priority is equal to one. And I want you to order them by the customer name in descending order. So pretty easy code to understand. Now, if I delete out this priority field just by pressing delete, and maybe if I drag category down here instead, maybe I only want to see calls that have the category of hardware. Now, if we're dealing with text in the criteria area down here, I need to put it in quote marks. So I'm going to type in hardware. Oops, like so. Let's run the query. And there we go. 
Once again, if we check out the SQL view, you can see we have that where statement in there. Now also be aware that you can use fields from other tables. We've very much been working in this one table. But if I go over to my add tables area and let's click on tuple status, let's add that table, I could now use this status field and drag it down into my query. So I'm going to grab status, let's drop it into here and the criteria, let's say I want to see all calls that are active. So now if I run this query, there is my refined list. Now if we jump into SQL view, you can see here this where statement says where the ticket category is equal to hardware and the status is active. So this is doing an AND condition. Both of these things need to be true in order for the query to produce the results. So the ticket has to belong to the category hardware and it has to have a status of active. And when we run that, we can see we get a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven results. Now, what if I was to change this, if we go into SQL view and just switch out AND for OR. Let's rerun this query and you can see we get a much longer list because this time we have an OR condition. We're returning results that belong to the category hardware OR are active. And if we go back into design view and check out the grid, you can see what's happened here. It's put active in this OR row at the bottom and we have hardware in our criteria. So those are the different ways and some tips and tricks when it comes to creating queries and running them when you're working in Access. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.